Hi everyone, welcome back to VRC Smart Data channel. This is chapter 10, Hello Alkanes and Hello Arenes here. So this is uh, part 6 video of Hello Alkanes and Hello Arenes. So here we are going to look after about the polyhalogen compounds. Okay, polyhalogen compounds. And with this, this lesson is going to be coming to the end. And this is a polyhalogen compounds. This is the last part of this chapter, last segment of this chapter. Okay. So this is completely theoretical part of the chapter. So let's see the theory parts. That's it. That is what is there. Okay, it's completely a theory part of the chapter. Clear. So hello alkanes and hello arenes in that. So if you have not watched the previous uh, sessions, that is part one to part five, the links are provided in the description. Okay, the playlist link is there. You can go and check it out. Watch all the parts. And if you have not subscribed our channel, kindly subscribe it and click the bell icon for notification. And follow our channel. If you subscribe, then you can receive all the video notification that I posted immediately. So now let us move on to the polyhalogen compounds. And let's look in detail about it. Polyhalogen compounds. Polyhalogen compounds. So halogen compounds where more than uh, more. That is poly in the sense what? More. So polyhalogen compounds means the where more number of halogens are present. So that is what the definition is given here. See, carbon compounds containing more than one halogen. So only it is called as polyhalogen compounds. Poly means what? Poly means many. That means more than one. So where more than one halogen atom is present in a carbon compound, that is called as polyhalogen compounds. Here, for example, Cf, uh, Cl3, CH2, Cl2, that, that will be like this, Cf. Cl3, CH2, Cl2. Okay. Some of the polyhalogen compounds that we are going to learn in this lesson is going to be about the dichloromethane or methyl chlo methane chloride. Tri Next one is triodomethane, uh, that is iodoform, tetrachloromethane, carbon tetrachloride, ferrons, and DDT. DDT is Dichloro, that is um, diphenyl dichloroethane is given. So that is what. Okay. Now, moving on to dichloromethane or methane chloride. So, listen here. So, first one is we are going to look after about the dichloromethane or methane chloride. Okay. So, dichloromethane. So, the formula is going to be, see, Carbon, both sides the hydrogen is attached and two chlorine is attached. That is, it is going to be um, CH2Cl, CH2Cl2. So CH2Cl2, it's this formula. So if you just see, means this is the structure. Dichloromethane is a colorless, sweet smelling violet liquid that have low boiling point. And insoluble in water. These points are very very important. You have to remember these points clearly. So this only will help you. So dichloromethane it is going to be colorless, sweet, smelling. For smelling it will be good. Violet liquid having it is having the low boiling point and it is insoluble in water. It is used as a solvent. Where it is used as a paint remover. Very important. Okay, what, is the, what are the uses of dichloromethane or methyl chloride they can ask. Okay, it is used as a paint remover and, and it is also used as a propellant in aerosols as a process solvent in manufacturing of drugs. There also, process solvent it is used. It is used as a metal cleaning finishing solvent. Um, these are its uses. Okay, this two point says its uses. Exposure. To lower levels of methane chloride in air can lead to slightly impaired hearing. These are the causes. What it causes? Okay, these are its uses. Uses and these are its causes. Okay. When it is mixed to air in low levels, slightly impairment of hearing can also take place and impairment of vision can also take place. Higher level of methane chloride in air can cause dizziness. Okay, dizziness, nausea, tingling, and numbness in fingers and toes. You know very well, right? 
so it also causes harm to the mental health even to the mental health also it can cause harm harmful it can be harmful even to the mental health clear so next we are going on with trichloromethane or chloroform trichloromethane is also called as what chloroform okay chloroform is a sweet smelling heavy colorless liquid this is also again colorless liquid it is also sweet smelling liquid only okay but it's heavy it has it is also low melting po uh, boiling point of 61 degrees okay ch3 that is chcl3 is manufactured by chlorination of methane followed by the separation of fractional distillation they use a fractional distillation in order to form that that is c the uh, methane is taken first what is methane ch4 is methane okay then it is allowed to do the chlorination that means cl2 is added in the presence of h nu in the presence of h nu you are going to get ch cl3 with the liberation of hcl clear so it is also used in the synthesis of ferron refrigerant r22 chloroform was once used as a general anesthetic in surgery that is as a medicine uh, during the surgery uh, they will be using it as a anesthesia chloroform once it was used okay however this had been discontinued however they stopped using the chloroform uh, because there was number of uh, safer alternatives they got instead of chloroform breathing about 900 parts of chloroform per million parts of air chloroform even for a shorter time so it is uh, not so good to use chloroform in human body because breathing about 900 parts of chloroform from a million parts it can cause dizziness little bit you are only smelling breathing it can cause dizziness fatigue and headache that much it is dangerous so when you are going to expose to chloroform and suppose a person is working in a chloroform factory or they are going to expose in the chloroform chronic means always exposure of uh, chloroform may cause damage to kidneys and liver it can damage kidney and liver chloroform slowly oxidizes by air in the presence of light to form poisonous um phosgen uh gas okay it forms a poisonous gas okay let's see the equation for that see first we are taking the chcl3 it is the gas uh, that is it is a chloroform that you have okay uh, when it is going to be oxidized in the presence of o2 and in the presence of light what it is going to happen is it is going to become as a poisonous phosgen gas that is cocl2 cocl2 with the liberation of hcl okay so as a result chloroform is stored in the dark bottles you will not uh, have it in the light areas so you will have it in the dark bottles to prevent the exposure of light the bottles are completely filled to completely it is filled to keep the air out so see this is a image you can so this is a structure of the chloroform so chloroform you have ch uh, cl3 that is c uh, 3 cl will be attached cl 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 be attached and one h will be attached clear this is your chloroform okay next moving for triiodoform triiodomethane actually iodoform so when it is coming for iodoform so here actually you will be having the okay so tri triiodomethane okay one bond will uh, normally with h okay triiodomethane iodoform is pale yellow crystalline solid has a pungent medicine like odor so it is a crystal solid first thing you have to remember it is uh, pale yellow it is crystalline solid and a pungent medicine like odor okay iodoform was used as an earlier they used it as an antiseptic due to the liberation of free iodine but due to its objectionable smell it has been replaced by other formulations containing iodine initially they used it as antiseptic uh, medicine okay so it is a colorless non flammable poisonous liquid uh, it is used in the manufacture of refrigerants aerosols and propellants okay 
Until the mid 1960s, it was also widely used as a cleaning fluid. It's very important. They used it as a cleaning fluid, both industries and home. Okay, they used for the purpose of cleaning, and it is a popular degreasing agent. Grease, you will be able to observe the grease and all. They will use to remove the grease using this uh, carbon tetrachloride at the home and spot remover, fire extinguisher, all for all these they used. Exposure to CCL4, that is tetrachloromethane, will make the heartbeat irregular or even it will stop the heartbeat. So, health risks associated with carbon tetrachloride are very serious. As the substance is suspected, um, carcinogen, chronic exposure of carbon tetrachloride may cause liver cancer. So, you, uh, when you are exposing more uh, towards the carbon tetrachloride, it can cause liver cancer in human beings. Kidney damage can also take place. So, carbon tetrachloride had been linked to the depletion of ozone layer. Even in the depletion of ozone layer, it plays a major role. Okay. Next, coming to France. Okay. So, what is all about this France? Okay. So, France are chlorofluorocarbons derivatives. They are chlorofluorocarbon derivatives which are removed from the refrigerators. Right? Yes. Of methane and ethane. They are non-toxic, non-corrosive, easily liquefiable gas. Dichloro, difluoromethane or ferron 12. Uh, its formula is CCl2F2. That is CCl2F2. Is one of the most common ferrons and is manufactured from tetrachloromethane by Swartz reaction. We already studied what is Swartz reaction and it is a named reaction also. Then ferron 12 is useful in aerosol propellants, refrigeration, air conditioning. Ferron 12 and other chlorofluorocarbons are known to be initiated radical chain reaction that led to the destruction of ozone layer. So the main cause of the depletion of ozone layer, ferrons are very important making an important uh, task. Okay, uh, now this is the structure of the ferrons. You can take it out. This structure. Okay, next. Finally, we are moving with DDT. DDT, it is dichloro diphenyl trichloroethane. You have to split it and read it. Dichloro till this. Diphenyl trichloro ethane that is called DDT okay next see DDT was originally prepared in 1873 in 1873 only DDT was prepared but Paul Muller and G.G. Uh, Parmichels in Switzerland discovered the effectiveness of DDT as an insecticide in 1939 in 1939 they saw that this DDT was very much effective as an insecticide it is used to prevent insect transmission, uh, insect transmitted human diseases, insect transmitted human diseases such as malaria, spread of mosquitoes, typhus spread by lice, all these things. Then DDT is toxic to many spe uh, species of fishes. For certain species of birds, eagles, uh, pelicans, uh, falcons and hawkers, hawks. It, uh, its exposure lead to thinning of eggshells, causes serious population declines. It's stored in the fatty tissues of the body and is metabol uh, metabolized is very slow. That means DDT is very toxic. Okay, for not only for human beings but for even for birds, eagles, fishes, okay, hawks, for all these things it is very much uh, toxic one. Use of DDT in agriculture also led to the measurable DDT levels in humans. So, use of DDT in agriculture will also cause the increase in the level of DDT in humans because they are eating that food, right? So, this is the formula for DDT that is given over here. Okay. So, as I said earlier, so as I said earlier, here I am giving the list of the named reactions. So, here you have the 8 named reactions in this chapter. Already I gave you all the named reactions uh, in detail 
in the previous sessions you can go and watch that write it in a separate note and keep it because it is very important and it will be useful first you have swartz reaction woods reaction finkelstein reaction friedel-crafts alkylation reaction azylation reaction footing reaction wood spitting reaction and sand mayer so eight name reactions are there in this chapter so all the eight are very important so um, you have to make thorough with all these eight name reactions from this chapter clear okay so thank you so much for watching this video and that's all for today's video so if you like this video kindly like share and subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon for notification follow our channel and uh, watch the previous session it will be very helpful for you so thank you so much bye